Hi, Ken Larsen here. The value that you find in your data for a woofer is called QTS. is super essential to give the final build the real experience that you're looking for. It's super important to design the enclosure correctly and in order for you to know how much volume and if you need to port it or you need to make it in a closed environment or whatever. This data, the QTS, is very, very, very important. And let me explain why that is and what it is. So, QTS is a Q value. When you're talking about Q values, you're talking about how long of a tail there is on a movement. So if you take a tuning fork, when you hit that tuning fork, it will continue to vibrate for a long time and make a sound at its own resonance frequency. That it keeps on playing and playing and playing that same tone, that is a Q value that is very high. A tuning fork has a Q value of about a thousand. So when you look in the data for a woofer in the data, the TL small parameters, you see that the values are typically from 0.2 to maybe 1.2. And 1.2 is a fairly high QTS. And Q uh, and one of 1.2 is very low. And so from hearing this, one could assume or get the idea that you want one there's as little as possible to get like a beautiful impulse response. Like impulse response is like when you give this speaker driver power from the amplifier of a like a bass punch, you know, boop. You want that to disappear as fast as possible. But the thing is, there's a lot of subjective uh, experience to this and a lot of experience in, you know, in how we usually hear things and how we enjoy things. And also, if the Q value is like 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 when then they're in the category of what we call overdamp, that means that they will take some energy towards the end so that it will start to break essentially before it's fully done. And the high Q value just keeps on lingering some. So the high Q will seem like more, it's fuller, it's fatter, it's more luscious. At some point, this lusciousness turns into an overdose. That's underdamped. And you get into that the bass simply seems muddy. Like, it's just like, one big mess of bass because the tails of the impulse are still going as the new uh, impulse is being introduced and that turns it into one big like big mess so where is it that we like this kind of balanced be well 
we have somebody named Butterworth found a point where that energy meets precision, where it's at its at its optimal balance, and that's what's called the Butterworth alignment, which is zero point seven seven. 0 0.707 and that's the Butterworth alignment and so that's why that we're using the Butterworth alignment so often in speaker building because it's just like a nice uh, balance point but it's subjective how much do we want how do we do we want like a very dry and precise and nuanced space or do we want like a fuzzy nice feel of some lingering like in the bass you know and that's where we need a slightly higher Q or a slightly lower one compared to seven, uh, 0 0.7 and that's what makes it so interesting is that you can hit that experience now by knowing that So what's important on the driver? I mean, what is it that makes this QTS? This is a bit dry, but it consists of a mechanical Q, which is called QMS, specified out, and then QES, which is the electrical, um, what's it called, Q value. So these two Q values are working in parallel if you think of it electrically and being when you look at if when when you know many times this is specified in QES and QMS particularly if you have like a you know a good driver you you will have these drivers uh, specified because QTS is like it's just a calculated value from derived from those two in parallel so um, So yeah, so that's 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 what it is. I mean, you and you calculate it just like you would uh, for a parallel circuit. You it's um, uh, one divided by you know QES plus one divided by QMS, and the square root of that is your result. That is your QTS. So as you see, the QES is always the lowest. And that's why that the QES is the one that basically decides the QTS. And actually, one will, you know, I, I would claim that QMS is actually a good thing to have slightly on the high side because that means that you don't have as much mechanical resistance in it. And since you don't really need it to, like, help it return to its original position, you'll want it, you know, basically sloppy and light. And um, yeah, so in this also to achieve the um, the right base, you can't uh, necessarily reach your goal with any given enclosure, but. I will get back into that. You can actually calculate by using your QTS to figure out what enclosure would be the best. If it will be ported or if it will be closed. It's not always that you can use whatever you want in that case in order to get the result that you want. All right. Well, this is just something general about uh, QTS. I hope that uh, you got something out of it comment um, and uh, I'll make a video about how to figure out what enclosure to use. Take care guys. Bye.